In the 1960s, four young Aboriginal women, three sisters and their cousin, were plucked from obscurity to form a music group which ended up performing for troops in Vietnam. They probably would have ended up just a footnote in history, but years later, the son of one of the singers started asking questions and wrote a musical about the band's experiences. The Sapphires became a major stage hit and is now a movie. 7.30 spoke to co-writer Tony Briggs and his mother, Laura Robinson, one of the real Sapphires, to hear the true story behind the film. Grew up in Shepparton, a little country town. Well, it was very hard. There was no work around and there was um, a lot of uh, racism back in the day. It was a very, very hard struggle for families to make it, uh, parents to feed their children and that. My parents and aunties, uncle, grandmother, were um, putting on concerts to raise money. It was just a simple thing, to raise money for, just for food, to help the community, and that's, that's how we became singers. We were coming home from work on the late shift, and we'd go past the club and sort of walk past real quickly, but we could hear the fantastic music. And one night we were coming past, and they asked if we had a, a hula dancer. And we said, yeah, we got one, my sister. <laughs> and she didn't turn up for the rehearsal on the following s Saturday. So he, you know, the guy said, well, can you sing? We said, oh, we'll give it a shot. And that's how we started. Credit to the grapevine. Can you make it sound blacker? Should have never. I really started writing the story of the Sapphires uh, when I was having conversations with, m with Mum. Um, probably, probably in, I'd say, 2000. And I noticed that she would be mentioning Vietnam a lot. And I, I knew about it, of course, but I, I, I'd never really asked her about it. It occurred to me that there is a lot of you know, history that, that uh, I've been missing out on simply because I haven't been asking. The film is about the experiences of three sisters and, 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 and a cousin, and they get picked up by a talent scout to go to Vietnam and perform for the troops. And your name again? We're the Sapphires. We'll see you in Saigon. Ultimately, it's about, you know, these, these young women um, finding their own strength, um, just finding out who they are, you know. We'd fly in to each one with the Air Force and fly out, and that was exciting, just, you know, putting your eyelashes on and you fixing your hair and everything. I couldn't believe I was there because I was watching it on the news, the, you know, the bombings and it was full on, yeah. You've got it within you, you just need to let it out. No mercy! I was the shy one actually, I was, yeah, a bit shy. I wasn't sexy or I didn't think myself as being sexy anyway. And I uh, will blame Keith Thompson, the co-writer, for that. <laughs> I don't look at me. <laughs> Certainly didn't see you at sexy. <laughs> not even not my auntie wasn't sexy. Yeah. None of them. Aunties weren't. <laughs> no, we were very modest. They didn't know what we were. Didn't just knew we were Australian. All they heard was the music. One of the things too is that I've always wanted this this film to be more about fun and, and, and entertainment and than, than anything else. Hey, hey, hey. What's his problem? Because we're black, stupid. No, because you're ugly. But having said that, you can't do a story about those times uh, with Aboriginal people um, and, and be an Aboriginal person and not have certain elements to that story in there. Oh, this poor little mission gin making a coconut shame, mate. Eh? What did you call me? Coconut? Oh, sorry, have I offended you? A lot of the themes would definitely cross over into whatever 
you know, you know, the black community in Australia or wherever they were, and we were oppressed. In soul music, they're struggling to get it back, and they haven't given up. So every note that passes through your lips should have the tone of a woman who's grasping and fighting and desperate to retrieve what's been taken from her. It's like it's a lot of the do. Aboriginal people from our mission were fighters and, and sort of first to go out there and do things and set the pace, you know. Like a volcano pushing through the earth beneath you. I'll take you there. Until finally it's easy enough, like breathing in and breathing I'll out and there. breathing in. I hope somebody goes, oh wow, this is somebody's story and, you know, all he did was sit down and talk to his mother. That's all I did. I just talked to mum. Because everybody has a story. Everybody. Yeah.